things to remind you of that you should be familiar with already. This um, notation is more complicated than, but well, less complicated than it looks, actually. This just is a saying, it's the set of points um, or set of values such that for all x, x is greater than a. Okay, well, what does that mean? It just means from a on up on the number line. All right, now, what I really need to talk to you about is what this stuff is, because you may not have ever seen that before. One thing is we want to know that this symbol means less than. What does it do when I add a bar on the bottom? Yeah, less than or equal to. And then if it goes points to the right, it is, and you might want to think of this pointing left if for less than, pointing to the right, it's read greater than. And then, of course, if I put a bar under it, it's you know what, okay? All right, now, uh, the thing that is indicated on these little symbols here to do the graphs of your values, um, this is called an open, bra open bracket. You want to call it open or non-inclusive. Okay, so what that means is I call it open or soft bracket. That would be non-inclusive of the number that you're starting at or where you are. It doesn't include that number. So that'd be like if it said less than, then you're going to need a open. Or if it said greater than, then you're going to need an open or soft bracket. Then there is the hard bracket. I'll either call it a hard bracket or I will use the terms in, oopsie, my, I went goofy. Oh, what the heck happened there? There we go. <clears throat> Hard bracket or inclusive. So I'll say, use, you know, hard bracket or I'll use the terms inclusive. Included means it includes that number. So that'll be happening when you get a bar underneath your inequality symbol. Okay, so let's go right through some examples. So I don't want to talk about what all of these mean. I'll get to it by describing it to you when we see this. This just says x is less than 4. That would be all values from 4 on down. Does it include 4? No, because there is a less than symbol and no bar under it. So that means it's non-inclusive of the 4. So you make a curved bracket. You sh uh, shade it to the left where all the numbers are smaller than 4. Now, it said to write the inter interval notation and graph. I think sometimes seeing the graph first is, makes it easier. So this is coming from the left-hand side would be where negative infinity is. The right-hand side would be where infinity is or positive infinity. You want to be thinking of left, negative, right, positive, etc. So this would be from negative infinity up to 4, it doesn't include the 4, so you use the soft bracket. You can never include infinity because we do not know where it ends. So you do a soft bracket on all infinities. Okay, that would be how it looks graphed, and this is called the interval notation. Okay, this one says x is between negative 7 and 5. So I'm going to stick a negative 7 on my number line, which would be left of 5. You do have to have things in a proper order. Okay, numbers on the right are bigger than numbers on the left on a number line. Okay, so this is saying that x is between. It says it doesn't include the negative 7. So we're going to do a soft bracket. And I'm aiming it that way because the x values are between between here. So we're going to shade the number line and then we get to 5. It will include it. So then we need a hard bracket. <coughs> okay. And that's exactly, it's going to look very similar in the interval notation. It's going to have soft bracket, negative 7. And then you put a comma between them and then the other side is the 5. And it does include it, so you have a hard bracket on that. Okay, so the next one, x greater than or equal to 500, just put a 500 on your number line. It includes it and everything bigger than that, 
the hard bracket shade to the right. Don't forget to include your arrow in your shading. Now, that's going to be in interval notation, 500, comma, to infinity and beyond. No, it's up on and on and on to the right. Now, you always have to have your leftmost value at the left and your right value at the right. Okay, it's got to go from smallest to largest. You can't have this flopped. It would be incorrect. This one says that x is between negative 3 and 5. It doesn't include either 1, and it's everything between them, which means numbers super, super close to negative 3 and 5, but never exactly negative 3 or 5. Interval notation, same thing, except a comma between the two numbers. It's like a segment. Okay, and this one's just x is between 0 and 4. Includes the zero, hard bracket, it's shaded in between. Oopsie. And doesn't include the four, so soft bracket there. And then zero comma four with the same bracket. Soft and hard. So this one, I'm going to turn it around so x is first because it says negative three is less than or equal to x which also means x is, and if you put the negative 3 on the right now, you'll have to have the arrow pointing at the negative 3. So I have to flip the symbol to reverse it. Now I can read it. It says x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So negative 3 on up, shade it all, and then have a hard bracket. And then to write it in interval notation, it's negative 3 all the way up to infinity. <laughs> Have I gone too fast for anyone? Okay, if you do, please speak up, because otherwise I'm going to probably speed up a little bit. Okay, we're ready? Okay, there is a point to this. I think I did enough for you to probably be able to do these, right? So maybe you want to skip so I make sure I get to everything that I want to get to. So, go ahead and um, move on to number 10 which I believe is that on the next page or something? It's on the, the B side. This is 8B. Yes? Okay, thank you. I'm just not looking at my worksheet. I'm just doing it. I guess I could look. Oh. All right, so we're going to now take and look at what the interval is and write an inequality. This would indicate that your value of X is from 3 on up or down down. So it's like, it says, this is going from negative, all the values from negative infinity up to three. So that means it goes from three. Okay. And it doesn't, so is X less than three or greater than three? Or what do I need to put in between here? If it has to get down to negative 50, negative infinity has to be less than and then you've got to decide, you look at the bracket, you see it's a hard bracket. We need a bar underneath the less than symbol. Okay. Negative infinity to negative 1, that's the same, very, very same thing, except it needs a less than symbol only because it doesn't include the negative 1. Now, this one is saying 2 to positive infinity. So that means we're going... From 2 on up, if you wanted a picture, this one meant it went from here to here. You don't, oh, sorry, that was a positive 3. You don't have to draw those. I'm just trying to maybe get you to see what they're saying. So this would be x is greater than 2. And do I need a bar underneath? No, because it's not including it. Okay, got a soft bracket. A soft bracket would tell you whether to put the bar on it. This has a hard bracket, so yes, it is x is greater than or equal to negative 2. And now we get to the harder kind to maybe even write. Um, this says x is between 4 and 9. So you put your x between a 4 and a 9. <laughs> and then you point the arrows to the left every time. So less than, less than. x is between 
it says this this actually says x is greater than four and x is less than nine. All right. Now, if I wait a minute, I got a hard bracket on one of my softs. So this needs no bar, but this side needs a bar. Okay, and this would say from three to seven in between, in between three and seven. So put the smaller number on the left, the bigger number on the right. Put your symbols always pointing to the left, and then add a bar underneath both of those since you have hard brackets. Okay, so given time, I'll maybe look and see if you can do uh, the rest of these. Let's get off of that now and move on to 19. Write an interval notation and graph. I think I already did enough of those, and I gave you some little plain number lines, I believe. All right, and... This is just the same stuff. So if you think we need to do more examples, anyone have one they'd like me to look at with you before we move on from the ones that I skipped? 16, 17, or 18? I'll just do them really quick, and you guys um, just make, maybe you try to be ahead of me. Oh, what am I supposed to do? Write an inequality. Okay, that would help to read the directions. All right, what we were doing here. Oh, X is between. You feel okay with those? Oh, and I just had a mess. This is just a mess. There, that's all you really need. Any question about those? Okay, then let's go to why are we even doing this. We're going to be solving some absolute value inequalities. Do you remember that what absolute value means? I will review it real quick. <clears throat> On a number line, if you start from zero and you said... Name the coordinates of, or location of a point three units from zero. Then you could say three. But is there another place that's three units from zero? Going the other way, right? One, two, three. So what absolute value is, is the distance from zero. That's how it's defined. So we could have two answers to the question, what are the coordinates of a point three units from zero? It could be either three or negative three. So that's why it says, if you solve each absolute value equation, there are probably two answers. Okay, and that's why. But these aren't looking quite the same. The absolute value of negative three was three, absolute value of three is three, now I'm going to figure, I got to figure out though about this. Okay, so it's different. So what I can do is the first step, write an equation that just drops the absolute value bars. Are you yes. Can you see the org in there? Yes. Y yes. Can you have it come to student services? Delete, please. Okay. Thanks. Sorry. <laughs> you have to go. Um, you may want to look at the recording. All right, then you're going to write a second equation. You know, obviously we could solve this one really quickly. We'd subtract 2 from both sides, and x would be 9. But that's only one possibility. Here is the other possibility. Never, ever, ever change what's inside of here, but you're going to rewrite it and change the sign of what it equals. Okay, so we're going to say it could x plus 2 might have equaled negative 3. So now we're going to solve this and figure out what value would have been made it, could there be a negative, um, well, we'll, I'll show you. At subtract 2 from both sides, you're going to get x is negative 13. Now, if you substitute back in here, negative 13 plus 2 is negative 11. 
the absolute value of negative 11 is 11. If you substitute 9 back in there, 9 plus 2 is 11. The absolute value of 11 is 11. This solve is where you solve to get both of the answers. Okay, so you have two solutions. Negative, I mean, positive 9 and negative 13. Okay, so the next one, we're going to say 2x. Oh, I picked a very weird writing instrument there. All right, so 2x is equal to 22, or I just wrote my 2s two different ways. 2x equals negative 22. Those are your two equations. So you divide by 2 and you get 11, and the other one you're going to get x is negative 11. Sometimes they are op just opposites of one another, but most of the time they won't be. <clears throat> so number 27, 3x plus 1 might equal 13, or 3x plus 1 is going to equal negative 13. So I subtract 1 from both sides and divide by 3. The first answer will give me 4. From the second equation, I'm going to get a different answer. And it's an icky looking answer because we're going to write a fraction. We subtracted 1 and got negative 14, divide that by 3, and we have negative 14 thirds. And leave it that way. Okay? Maybe I still need this page? All right. Let's go with this one, x minus 8 equals 11, or x minus 8 equals negative 11. Notice I'm never changing what's in the absolute value bars. Add 8 to both sides for the first one, we get x is 19. Add 8 to both sides in the next one, and we get negative 3. Okay. Uh, number 29, 5x minus 7 equals 28, or 5x minus 7 is negative 28. We will add 7 to both sides. We get 35, so we get x at 7. And on this one, we're going to get add 7 to negative 28. We're going to get negative 21. And then we're going to have a negative 21 fifths for our other answer. Okay, now, see the little star on my paper? Or my, this isn't even a paper, it is a sort of a PowerPoint, if you will. I, you must isolate the absolute value first. Very, very important. You cannot write your equations until you have an absolute value alone. So we got to get rid of this minus 6. So we must add 6 to both sides first. So that gives us 4x. Um, x, the absolute value of 4 times x is equal to 28. And now 4x equals 28 or 4x equals negative 28. Dividing by 4 gives us 7 and negative 7. <clears throat> okay. Next three are stars because you have to isolate the absolute value first. So 31 is just like the one I went over. Subtract 7, we get 15. Then write your two equations. 3x equals 15, or 3x equals negative 15. So notice that if it's a multiplier inside that um, absolute value bar, that's when you get opposites for answers. 5 and negative 5. This one, we'll have two different ones. We need to divide by 2 first. Isolate my absolute value. And what's weird, you know, no matter how many times I say this, there's going to be some people on their next quiz who don't, they distribute this and then they solve it and it doesn't work. 
You can't distribute that too into the absolute value bars. No, 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 no. Not like a parenthesis. <laughs> what? And we got zero and negative eight for number 32. And then we get to 33, and we've got two steps before we can even write our absolute value equations by dropping the absolute value bar. We add one. We must then divide by three. And then we can rewrite two equations. 2x plus 5 needs to equal 9 or negative 9. Subtract 5, divide by 2. One of the answers is 2. Subtract 5 and divide by 2. The other answer is negative 7. Okay, have I gone too fast for anyone here? Okay. All right. These are all starred just like that was. Okay, um, and that's just 336. So those are the last three on that page. We are doing pretty good on time, I think. Yeah, we are. Wow, I don't know what happened to me on the second period. But, all right, so we'll just keep, keep going. Subtract four. Anyway, I have to get to nine, worksheet nine. That's why I was thinking of stopping and not doing these three. But we're good. Okay, so then this is just 7x equals 63, 7x equals negative 63. Remember that you can test your solutions. Um, we're going to subtract 4 on the next one. Then divide by 6. Now we can drop the bars and write the two equations. Now these have only two answers because they have equal signs. Notice that we aren't doing inequalities now. Well, guess what we're going to do in a minute. The ones with the inequalities. So, <laughs> we're going to add sub, uh, 2 to 7 to get 9, and the other, when we add 2 to negative 7, we get negative 5. Okay, and then last but not least, we're going to subtract 8. Then I can write the two equations. And I can add two. I get four fifths for one answer. And then I add two and I get zero for the other. All right, now I need you on 9A, please. Okay, the top of 9A. Now we'll put the two concepts uh, or whatever together. One thing you need to remember, and you probably remember from Algebra 1, or if you don't, then I'm reminding you, <laughs> that if you're doing an inequality, less than or greater than, symbol in the, it's instead of an equation, it's called an inequality, then if you multiply or divide by a, negative number, then you must reverse the inequality. You change the sign, you change the sign. Does that make sense? Simplify it. If you change the sign because you're multiplying by a negative, you have to flip the symbol as well. All right, and then we're going to write our solutions in interval notation. So, for the first example, we need to add 8 to both sides, and then we need to divide by 5 to give us y is less than 4. 
I hate these little number lines with the flashes already on them. But I'm figuring four has to go on there. So I might as well put three before it and five after it, since that's how a number line would be numbered. And this says y is less than four. That means we're going to shade down to the left. And when we get to the four, what are we going to do? Soft or hard bracket? Soft. Because it's not included. And then for our interval notation, we have to realize it went down to negative infinity. So you start with the leftmost value of negative infinity, soft bracket on it, comma, up to four, soft bracket on the four. Okay, so the next one, we're going to subtract five from both sides. We have negative 2x is greater than or equal to 22. We are now going to divide by negative 2. So now I need to star this one because that tells me dividing by a negative, I must flip the sign. Okay? So I'm divided by a negative. I have x is less than or equal to negative 11. Okay, so if I put negative 11 in the middle, negative 12 would be left of it and negative 10 would be right of it. I would need to go down to the negative infinity side and when I get to the negative 11, I need a hard bracket. So this one's going to look like an interval notation, negative infinity up to negative 11, including, so you have a hard bracket. All right, now number three. Three has x. I'm adding seven to both sides, which gives me three has x is greater than 9. I think what most kids found easiest to do was multiply by the bottom number, multiply by 2. Oh, you're back. Yay. And then divide by 3. So I've got 3x is greater than 18. And then if I divide by 3, x is greater than 6. So I'm going to put 6 in the middle. 5 would be on the left and 7 would be on the right. It does not include the 6, so I'll soft bracket and shade right. Run 9A. Okay, so I go from 6 to infinity and beyond. Aha, uh -huh, so I A little old now for you guys, right? I don't know. To infinity and beyond. All right, being weird. Okay, we caught up. Anybody need this page still? All right, let's do a few more here. Now we have inequalities with a variable on both sides. Graph the solution. We have options when we solve these. So knowing that it doesn't matter if you subtract 2x or 6x, that's up to you. So tell me, what do you want to do? Subtract 2x, I heard? Or subtract 6x? 6x. Oh, oh, two, oh, see? There's options. All right. should always be on the left side. Yes. No. No. Okay, then I'm going to go against what you said. All right, so I'm going to take away 2x from both sides just because they said I have to keep x on the left, and that's not true. All right, so I subtracted 2x from both sides, and now I'm going to add 1. And now I'm going to divide by 4. Why is it depressing? I don't know how to read that. It says 2 fourths is less than x. Let's just turn it around. Does it matter? I, I, you read it easier if you turn it around. So I'm, all I'm going to do is turn the whole thing around. And this is how I'm proving to you it doesn't matter 
if I subtract 2x or subtract 6x. Now, it's going to say x is greater than 1 half. Now, if you had subtracted 6x, you would have had negative 4x plus 1 equals negative 1, that, or less than negative 1. You would have subtracted 1 and have negative 4x is less than negative 2. You would have divided by negative 4, and you would have had the symbol. Yeah, so you'd have to turn it around one way or the other. You've got to do something, okay? Anyway, so it doesn't matter. So anyway, I'll just do a simplified version of, I'm going to just be naughty and label 1 half right there and, then zero would be left of it, and one would be right of it. And I'll just make my... I'm not real picky about how you label your number lines. As long as I can tell you, point them in the right direction, and you do know the order that the number should appear on the number line. All right, so this is saying where our values are from one-half all the way up to infinity. I'm beyond... How do you go beyond infinity? I do not know. It's pretty... Well, oh, mind blower. Okay, distribute on number five. So you get 12 minus 4x. Oops, that kind of massacred my 4. Okay, now I need to get my x's on one side. You have an option again. What's... Add 4x to both sides or add 5x to both sides? I'm going to add 4x, just so I do a different thing than I did the last one. Okay, so I'm just going to do this. Sorry, I, I usually paint colors if I'm going to put something under something. All right, so then I've got 5 minus, oh, that's going to be just minus 1x is greater than or equal to 12. I'll subtract 5. Negative x is greater than or equal to 7. And then I have to get rid of that negative x. i got to divide both sides by negative 1, so I've got to flip the sign. <laughs> flip the sign, everyone. Okay. So x is less than or equal to negative 7. Negative 7 in the middle, negative 8 left of it, negative 6 to the right of it, including the negative 7 on down. Ooh. All right, so that's from negative infinity up to negative 7, soft bracket on the negative infinity, hard bracket on the negative 7. You need to be clear about your hard and soft brackets. I have some students who try to write it in ways that makes it ambiguous, but I'll know. I'll just mark it wrong. So it needs to be clear. Not that I like to mark people wrong. Okay. Options. Subtract 7n or add n. Want to add n? Okay. So, so I'll have 6 is less than 8n plus 4. I'll need to subtract 4 from both sides. And then I'll have to divide by 8. So I've got 2 eighths is less than n. So now I'm going to turn it around to have n first, which means I'll turn around the symbol. And then I'll reduce the 2 eighths to 1 fourth. Okay. Um, okay, one fourth. What do I stick next to it? I don't know. Well, no, that'd be zero. And then this would be one half if you're going to go by fourth. Okay, I'm not going to get picky. You're probably just going to write one thing on there. All right, so that'd be inclusive of the one fourth and then anything bigger, so shade right. All right, so because your interval notation, all you got to write is from one fourth to infinity. Anybody still need this page? Camera 
Lauren, what are you sharing with Scott? Okay, I couldn't hear you, but I actually don't really want to know right now. So I'm going to move on. This one right here is saying X is between negative 2 and 1. On the number line, that would be inclusive of the negative 2 all the way to the 1. But it doesn't include the 1, and so then it's shaded in between. So and problems would generally look like this. They're going to be between... You're going to have something between two numbers. It might be brackets. It might be a combination thereof. Okay. So they're going to be between. Intro to compound inequalities. Then there's going to be problems that say or. So it says or greater than, uh, if, if x can be less than or equal to negative 3 or greater than 1, it's asking that we represent numbers that are either less than negative 3 or greater than 1. Back here, what's the difference? This is saying that they have to be restricted to two things. So this will say a compound inequality is two simple inequalities joined by and or or. And they're going to look like this. And problems that are restrictive or problems are non-restrictive. When an inequality says x is greater than or equal to negative 2 and less than 1, it's asking that we represent the numbers that are both bigger than negative 2 but also smaller than 1. Okay, so that's why it's in between. If we do a problem that is or, it's asking that we represent numbers that are um, actually from separate inequalities. Okay? So if it said x is less than negative 1, that would be from here. Not, oopsie, I put it in the wrong place. Whoops. So this would be from negative 1, open bracket, down. X is less than negative 1. Or it can be 2 on up, and including the 2. So that would be a hard bracket at 2, shaded to the right. So or problems are going to generally look like this. They're going to look like tails with a gap between them. Or they might have hard brackets. Or they might have some combination. Right? They're two tails. So let's try a couple. Right here, how are you going to solve this thing? You're going to have to add eight to both all three pieces here. Negative 2 plus 8. Do we really need the full 5 minutes? I'd really like to have you see these couple of problems. 8 at 8 is negative 2. You get 6 is less than 3t, which is less than or equal to 18. Okay, then you would divide by 3. Now it says that t is between. Is this an and or an or? Well, this had any, this thing sandwiched in the middle, so this is like an and problem. The t values are between 2 and 6. I don't know if I think I just said 4. But anyway, I hate these number lines. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Most of the time, I'd rather you just did your own number line. It includes both the 2 and the 6 and everything in between. So that would be from 2 to 6. Okay, and then this one, it's going to be the same type, all right? It's going to be solve and graph. These are ands, so it's going to be in between. Now, I'd like to look at, let's see. No, those aren't that bad. So let me skip to another one just so that people who have to, are leaving early have seen an or problem. So now you just got two separate things here. So you got 2x is less than subtract, divide, and you get x is less than 1. Or add 7 to both sides, and you get 16. Divide by 4, and you get 4. So you guys get your worksheet. You know what the assignment is. Okay, I know who has to go because they're injured. Um, you're going to need to have 1, 2, 3, 4. I don't care where you numbered it, just so long as I can tell that you know it's the tail. So from, and this, oh, this you got to write in two pieces, the uh, interval notation. So it's two pieces. You have to have negative infinity up to one. 
hard soft brackets on both, and then you union that with the other part for to infinity. Whenever you have the two, you're going to just write a union between when you write the notation, interval notation. Shall we do one more of those? Actually, let's look at number 13. Subtract 7. Divide by negative 2. Uh-oh, I said divide by negative 2. So flip the symbol. So x is greater than or equal to 2. And then the other piece, we would subtract 5, get negative 3. Divide by, ne by positive 3. Don't flip the sign. You're just dividing by a positive. Okay, so it's saying x is bigger than 2 or less than negative 1. So it includes the 2 on up. And it doesn't include the negative 1, but it goes all the way to the left from there. Okay, so that's going to be negative infinity to negative 1. Union, close bracket, or a hard bracket, 2 to infinity. All right, I'm going to let you do, let's do the um, worksheet part, and I'll let you wait on the book part. Bring your book tomorrow in case we get some time in order to work on the book page and ask questions, et cetera.